Today is the 15th anniversary of the attacks on September 11, 2001. Those who murdered innocent human beings using the name of God mistakenly presented God as a type of vengeful God that kills those who don't submit. We live in a time of tribulation where there are wars and rumors of war, our economy is uncertain, and Christians are persecuted and martyred by the thousands. Pope Francis called our situation a type of, quote, piecemeal World War III, end quote. And in an interview with reporters, the Holy Father used the elements of the Church's just war doctrine to comment on U.S. military intervention. Quote, in these cases where there is an unjust aggression, I can only say that it is licit to stop the unjust aggressor. I emphasize the word stop. I'm not saying to drop bombs, to make war, but to stop the aggressor. Stopping an unjust aggressor is licit, end quote. And even in the face of such mass destruction of the innocent and suffering poor, Pope Francis declared a year of mercy. And in his Jubilee Year of Mercy letter, Misericordiae Voltus, the Pope wrote that Jesus is the merciful face of the Father. So even in the midst of war and death, the Church still proclaims that God is our loving and merciful Father who calls us back to conversion to Him. The Church fights evil with goodness because love is stronger. In today's Gospel from St. Luke, our Lord teaches the parable of the lost sheep. Jesus leaves the 99 behind and goes after the one precious, dear little sheep. And there are two main points here. First, there are times when you and I are that one little precious lost sheep. The second point is that there are times when we're not the lost sheep, but you and I are the ones searching for that one lost sheep. Let's reflect on that first point, that we are the ones that Jesus is looking for. Notice the context of where the sheep is lost. Where? In the desert. This desert represents those things in our lives that make us sad, those things that weigh us down, our bad choices, our mistakes, our sins, our broken family relationships, hatred, anger, etc. What deserts are you and I lost in? In the first reading from the book of Exodus, where were the people wandering? In the desert. They worshipped a golden calf and were described as a stiff-necked people. But after Moses implored God to have mercy, the Lord relented in the punishment he threatened to inflict on his people. And that's what our loving, merciful Father does for you and me through his Son, the new Moses. We, too, have built our own modern-day golden calves. But when we call on Jesus as the only merciful Savior of the world, God relents and stops eternal punishment. St. Paul, who persecuted and killed Christians, is a model for us. In the second reading, he wrote to the young bishop Timothy, I am grateful to him who has strengthened me, Christ Jesus our Lord, because he considered me trustworthy in appointing me to the ministry. I was once a blasphemer and a persecutor and arrogant, but I have been mercifully treated. And here's the other thing, that even when we come back and convert back to God, notice that there's so much joy that the Father has over somebody that comes back to him. According to Jose Maria Escreva, the founder of Opus Dei, the Gospel of Luke is a type of gospel of mercy. St. Jose Maria says that the gospel of mercy describes the joy that God has when a sinner returns. Jesus puts, I mean, look at this. Jesus takes the lost sheep and puts it on his shoulder, walks over with great joy, and calls a party for this one little lost sheep. And this leads to the second main point. We are sometimes like Jesus, seeking that one lost sheep sometimes. 
And how do you and I become merciful like Christ? We will be an effective minister to others when we regularly celebrate God's mercy in the sacraments of reconciliation and the Holy Eucharist. There's a famous Latin phrase. It goes like this. Nemo dat quod non habit. I can't give what I don't have. I can't give what I don't have. If we expect to bring others to Christ and to his church, we cannot do so without confession and filling our souls with the holy body and blood of Christ frequently. Pope Francis wrote, quote, Let us place the sacrament of reconciliation at the center once more. For every penitent, it will be a source of true interior peace. And you and I may sometimes feel like we're not equipped for this. You and I might feel like, how can I talk to God about others? I'm, I can't talk about religion to other people. I can't challenge other people with their immoral behaviors, especially within my own family. We might think we might not have the perfect smile or the perfect charisma, the perfect personality to do God's work, or we can't quote Bible passages all the time. But the point here is that even though it's important to be able to train ourselves to talk about God with others, we can best reach out to lost sheep when we ourselves are in the state of grace through confession, no longer that one lost sheep. And when we receive Jesus himself in the Holy Eucharist, we need the foundation. The Second Vatican Council taught that the Eucharist is the source and summit of the Christian life. One Catholic in the state of grace receiving Holy Communion is more powerful than all the armies of the world combined. No longer will it be our weak selves seeking out that one lost sheep, but it's Christ in me seeking out that lost sheep to go back to God. Conversion and repentance will lead to world peace. I mean, I'd love to see Miss America or Miss Universe be asked a question, so what's your theory for world peace? And I'd love to have her say, well, go to confession and mass. Our Lady Fatima, who appeared in Portugal 99 years ago, said, if men knew what eternity is, they would do everything they could to change their lives. She also said, in the end, my immaculate heart will triumph and there will be a period of peace in the world. But first, we need to change our ways to our merciful Father. So to summarize, even though the church is going through such great tribulation, even though the world is going through such upheaval, we still proclaim the merciful Father. Jesus goes after that one lost sheep. And if we are to participate in evangelizing the world, we have to first go to the sacraments. It is then that we'll find peace in our families and in our lives. Our Heavenly Father delights in us when we go to Him. I close with the words of the responsorial psalm that is speaking about the Father. I will rise, I will rise, I will rise and go to my Father.